basically we just want to show you so you can see and appreciate how far um, the process has come. And the first step is discovering maple syrup, which I think is probably was the hardest step. Because when I look at that maple tree over there, to me, it does not scream, pour me on your pancakes. It actually just looks like a tree. I probably wouldn't have figured out that there was something delicious inside it unless I was someone who spent a lot of time in the woods, who paid a lot of attention, uh, of attention to the animals. And so by watching the animals is likely how the First Nations people discovered maple syrup. Now this time of year, squirrels will climb up maple trees and they'll make little incisions in the bark with their, um, with their teeth. And you can see them allowing the sap to come out and they'll actually lick the sap up off the tree. Deer will do the same thing. They'll kind of nip the ends of the um, branches and as the sap comes out, they'll drink it. Because after a long, long winter, do you guys, has anybody ever noticed this phenomenon before where squirrels are really, really fat in the um, fall? Especially if you live in Toronto, you've seen some fat squirrels, right? Really fat. And then in the spring, the springtime, they're super, super, super skinny because they haven't had a lot of things that are mineral rich. And so in the springtime, the sap is the first thing that has a lot of vitamins in it. And when maple sap comes out of the tree, it looks exactly like water. And so that's what I have in my trough here. I know it kind of looks dirty. Would you guys want to take a little taste of that? Probably not. But so this is sap. Sap is 97% water and only a little bit of sugar. So what we have to do is get rid of the water. So to get rid of the water, we have to do something called evaporate. And can anyone tell me how we might evaporate the water? By heating it? By heating it, yeah, totally. Pots and stoves, all things that the first people didn't have. What did the first people have? Well, they had only things that they could find in the forest or sometimes things that they could trade with. So mostly wood and rocks and bone and that kind of thing. So instead of putting a pot over their stove, they had a fire and they had wood and they had rocks. So what I've been doing today with limited success is I've been heating my rocks in the fire until they get really, 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 really hot. And when they're hot enough, they kind of work like a reverse ice cube. So you know how when you put ice cubes in your water, it gets really cold. Well, this is kind of like a hot ice cube, a hot rock cube, this is meant to be a word. And we put this in our water and what it should do is create some steam. So if my rock is hot enough, what sound will it make when I put it in that trough there? Yes. And if it doesn't work, I'll feel really sad. So if it doesn't work, will you guys make that sound for me? <laughs> Thank you. So these ones should be kind of hot enough. Let's see. Usually they have to be kind of white. And I'm using an antler to dig my rocks out of the coals because that's one of the things that the First Nations people would have done. They also would have used this to cook their soups and stuff like that too. All right, can I have a drum roll, please? Hey! All right. So if I was really, really good at this and I was mostly working on the fire and not hanging out with people, I probably have this going and boiling. So if this was boiling down and cooking down like that, it would take seven days to make maple syrup, which is way too long for me because I'm very impatient. Um, and they would probably cook it past maple syrup into like a delicious toffee, maybe a little bit less hard than what you guys are eating there. And then they cut it into cubes and give the cubes out to people to take out on their days and men to go hunting and stuff like that. The women to do their crafts and farming and that kind of thing. So that's that's it. That's how the first people made maple syrup. You guys are going to move along and see the pioneers. They had metal and cool things like drills uh, and then, you know, modern farmers. And it makes the process a lot faster. Oh, uh, have you been here before? <laughs> Me too. Did you read our book? Did you read our book? There's a book with all photographs here. But uh, these are some seed in our kettles. And uh, the three pots were perfectly for the number of trees. It's mostly water, but there's a little bit of sugar you can't see yet. And I cook it with our nice uh, nice firewood. You get steam. See that wood? It grows up steam. So have a look at number two. Are you ready for this one? And you see the sugar in there. You see the sugar that yeah. color? Well, that lets us know oh, yeah. that there's more sugar in number one than number two because I cooked it there first and then moved it over to this one. Did you need to get the cluster? And then number three, we, we nicknamed this grandma's kettle. Do you know why this is grandma's kettle? Because she's the one that decides if it's ready. What do you think? Ready? Two, 
watery. No, I know she sits too watery. You can go back to sleep, Grandma. Not ready yet. She would know how it would pour. She would know how thick it would be. And of course, taste test it. That would be the best job being a grandma. Grandma should taste test it. And if some of you have ever made that jam, it's called uh, aproning or different words about how it pours off the uh, ladle. And she would know if it was ready. And because they didn't sell it, they, they weren't scientific about it, we don't have any thermometers in there. When you go around the corner, you'll see the sugar shack and I'll explain how they do the evaporator. But she would know. Maybe her family likes it a little bit darker, a little bit thicker. So she would know if it was ready. And the last stage would be to take a little filter cloth here. And they would reuse everything. So probably great grandma's old shirt. She got a little bit thin at the elbows, but just enough to filter. She's very much like a coffee filter, really. And we're getting rid of little bits of leaves and little bits of bark with all the crazy stuff coming from our skies there. So what would happen is grandma might boil this in a smaller pot bowl and once it cools it would crystallize. If you look carefully you see the initials OR or RO and it would be the reverse of the farmer and then you would get a sugar loaf and it would be imprinted with the initials. And this is just a simple one, but I've seen some beautiful ones handmade in Quebec. It could be a maple leaf or a sugar shack. And you would know for sure that some farmers from Blaise uh, Farm, North of Quebec City, and some of the How long does it take now? This takes about four, four to five hours. Oh, four to five hours, eh? Think about it. Where's my fire? My fire is contained in a firebox that's underneath that small stand. So I can heat way quicker, right? And my smoke goes out. There's no smoke involved in this particular system. And if you were in Quebec, you'd have a huge structure like this. Starting off here, do you guys see that it's a big different shape than it was over in the Pioneer Tons? Now they had big pots, right? They were round and deep. This one is very wide and very shallow. So by doing that, we've actually increased the surface area to allow the heat to come in contact with the sap at more points, and it actually is able to evaporate and boil faster. So that is one of the ways that we are smart here at the Pioneer, sorry, Modern Days. Um, another difference, the one inside you will see, it also has a skirt around the outside bottom here. So it's got a metal skirt that actually uh, protects the, it keeps the heat inside so that all the heat is actually going straight into the sap, not being lost to the surroundings or our environment, like through wind or rain or anything like that. But it also has a chimney. So the chimney takes all the smoke right out of the building and I don't have to worry about as much smoke when I'm inside there. Unfortunately, we're out here, so that's why I got my sunglasses on to keep me nice and clear so I can actually see what's going on. But that is the start. Then if you guys look up here, you guys see all the tubes up there? Lots of cool tubes, just like these ones right here. So you may see the blue tubes over there. They connect up to each other, and they connect up to that big black tube. And that big black tube goes all the way around and actually connects up to the back of this building. You see it right there? Big black tube. Goes all the way around. And then follow the blue with your eyes. It goes all the way to the black one. So. What, they, what we've done is we actually have plastic spiles going into the trees, just like these here. So these plastic spiles are, with the invention of plastic, it's a lot cheaper. You're able to make them more readily, and they're you know a little bit cheaper, easier to make, and so it's not as financial burden. But we also have tubes. Tubes are connected to each other, and then connected up to one big bucket. So instead of having a bucket at every tree, and having to go up and down the hill to collect up all the sap, I have one big bucket in the back, that all the trees are connected to. All of the sap comes all the way here, thanks to gravity, and it all flows down into the big bucket, at which point all I have to do is open a valve and all the sap flows into my evaporator. Pretty smart, huh? Yeah, so 
we are a lot easier and more efficient this uh, nowadays. That is why our kids are able to stay in school all of March and we don't have to have, you know, one month long March break. So that's pretty cool. But that is also, that is still not the end of how we are smarter and more efficient with our uh, maple syrup process. So another difference. Do you guys remember how the pioneers could tell whether or not it was ready? Anybody? By the look. By the look. Or as I like to say, uh, they guessed. Yeah. <laughs> so they go, yeah, I think it looks good. I think it tastes like maple syrup. It looks like maple syrup. It's pretty good. Now in modern days, we do not like guesswork. Everything has to be exact. For it to be sold as maple syrup here in Canada, it has to be exactly 66.5% sugar. In order to be 66, I'm sorry, if it is anything less than that, then it'll be too watery. It'll actually start to go bad faster and start to ferment. But that is, you know, we each have our own opinions on whether or not that's a good thing. But if it's too high, then we will get hard um, sugar particles to actually start to form in the syrup. And then when nobody wants sort of a particle sandy sort of tasting pancake, right? So that is why it has to be exactly 66.5% sugar. In order to get 66.5% sugar, we use this fancy thing. This is a thermometer. It tells us the temperature of the sap. Water has a boiling point of 100 degrees. If we're able to get the temperature up to 104 degrees, it is no longer water. That means that the sugar level inside has gotten high enough that it has been able to raise the boiling point. So therefore, if it's 104 degrees, we know that it is 66.5% sugar. So that is the temperature that you need to get it to to get maple syrup. If you raise it even more, you got something else. So if you want to make maple butter, or maple sugar, or even maple taffy, all you have to do is boil it to a big, uh, higher temperature so that you're able to get more water out and leave more sugar behind. And so everything is very scientific and precise nowadays. So it's pretty cool. That's about it for the modern maple, th maple syrup uh, method. That is my uh, one other point. We are lucky that we have a hill. Some maple syrup uh, farms do not have a hill around them. So if they wanted to, they could just tap the trees at different heights and that creates gravity to bring all the sap towards them. Or some farms are really, really lazy and they just have a suction pump do all the work. So they just have an electrical pump or some kind just pump all the sap to them. So those are all the different ways. So it's pretty cool, but that's about it.